Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video, and today we are going to be looking at the 2022 Senate elections, and some really interesting new polls that were released earlier this week, and you know, we're going to go back a little bit towards the beginning of this month, that paint an interesting picture for the 2022 Senate elections. But first, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, currently at 5.1k, uh, we just hit 5k, so thank you guys so much for that, let's keep grinding though, keep up the grind. Um, by the way, please follow me on Twitter, Instagram as well. Instagram, I kind of just started. I don't um, have too many followers there, so I'll follow you back if you follow me on Instagram. Um, and on Twitter, I'm trying to get to 1,000 by the end of the summer. So that's it for my uh, short shtick about where you should follow me. We're going to get started with the states that I think should not really be discussing. So these states are going to be safe no matter what. I don't really care what the polls say in any of these states because they're not you know, states that are expected to be competitive and are, re are realistically not going to be competitive. All of these states that I have labeled as safe for either party were double digits for um, for uh, their party. So every blue state is was double digits for Joe Biden. And all these red states I'm labeling were double digits for uh, Donald Trump in 2020. So that's Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, the state of Alabama. South Carolina, which was, I think, 11 points for Trump, was the closest of this of these states. Kentucky, Indiana. So these are the states I think we're not going to be looking at too closely, but we're going to get right into it with some polls. And, you know, I, I'd say the most polled Senate race that, that yeah, so far has been New Hampshire. So in New Hampshire, uh, there was a poll that came out from the University of New Hampshire, which it was an okay poll, and we can look at the cross tabs, um, I guess, it, um, if that would be helpful. But, but, but what I think is interesting is that we see... Uh, very, very uh, elastic electorate, I guess you could say, in that, you know, if Chris Nunu were to run in this poll, him being a popular governor, he would win, according to this poll, by 1%. Now, at the same time, voters would elect a Democrat over former Senator Kelly Ayotte by 4%, and over Don Bolduc, who lost the 2020 Senate race here by 16, he would lose to Hassan by around 10. So, we see that New Hampshire, and this is what I've been saying, we see the New Hampshire rights are, you know, they like the Democratic Party, but they're willing to vote for a Republican if they trust him. And it looks like they tr tr trust Chris Sununu. Now, a one-point lead is very, very unstable, you know. And people have squandered much worse than one-point lead. So, you know, Sununu is in no way safe if he were to run. But what we are seeing here is that voters are, is that there is an amount of crossover support for Sununu that other Republicans would not have. So, just... It's kind of hard to see the cross tabs because, you know, they, they made it tiny, which, you know, kind of makes sense. But what you can see here is, you know, just to take a look at what's going on between Hassan and Bolduc, and I wish I could zoom in because that would be much more helpful. Um, but what I want to point out here is, as you can see, in, in terms of education, for example, we can compare this. Uh, you know, here's, here's an example. College graduates would have preferred Hassan by 31%. Now, if we look at, you know, her versus Sununu, in the poll that uh, we look right here. Let's see if I can pull that up, pull up this poll. College graduates would have only preferred Sununu by 12%. So, you know, if I recall correctly, that's basically a 20-point swing between you know, 31% and 12 That's a 19-point swing. And if we take a look at, you know, 2020 presidential vote, 94%, you know, Biden voters preferred, ha preferred Hassan by 94%. Now, if we look at Sununu, I'm sure Biden voters still would back Hassan, as you can see. Uh, here between her and Sununu, but only by 82%. So that's still an advantage, for sure. But that's still a 12-point swing. And in, you know, Joe Biden won New Hampshire by 7. A 12-point swing in a midterm election is still pretty, pretty big. And I think that there would still be even more crossover support for Sununu because polls, you know, generally speaking, they underestimate Republican support. So I think that, you know, these are encouraging polls for Chris Sununu, which is which is why this is a good poll for Sununu, but overall, you know, like when you weight the polls, the Hampshire would still be lean deep. Now, that being said, um, this is not my rating for the state, and I still do think that Chris Sununu would win if he ran. Now, the next poll you see here is from Global Strategy Group showing that Michael Bennett was up on uh, was up on L Lauren Boebert by 13%. That, that, that's a safe margin of victory, according to the polls. Now, another poll, and I think Colorado... Overall, I don't think Colorado is going to be too competitive. It could fall into the single digits, but I don't think that the GOP would have a realistic chance of winning it. But a more competitive see, as you can see, is that Marco Rubio, according to this poll, has, had, would have a 20-point lead on Val Demings. Now, again, I criticized this poll on Twitter when it came out. It came out about a month ago. Uh, but, it, you know, they think 
or th their sample was that Rubio is going to win by 20%. And, you know, this poll does not make a ton of sense, and I'll show you why in one second. So the poll is really weird because, you know, Florida State, that Donald Trump won by 3%. So they should be sampling more Republicans than Democrats. But they sampled 14 more, Repu more Democrats than Republicans, which does not make a ton of sense for me. And as you can see here, you know, the polls seems kind of unprofessional. I mean, like, they misspelled Demings, I believe. And they had Marco Rubio getting 41% of the uh, Democratic vote. That is something that er, that is not realistic. And as you can see, Marco Rubio is a good politician. He's won critical racism before, before and he has done a good job of winning elections. But I don't think that, he, that it's realistic to expect him to get, you know, 40% of the Democratic vote. Because we live in a polarized country where... Unless your name is Chris Sununu or Phil Scott, you're not getting that amount of ticket splitting. And this is a Senate race, which is different than governor's race, which is what we saw in, you know, 2020 in Montana. Steve Bullock was a very popular governor in Montana as a Democrat, ran for Senate, lost by 10%, did not get anywhere close to the amount of crossover support that he got from the GOP when he ran for governor in 2016. Now, another interesting thing here is that they have Demings getting 20% of the GOP vote, which is more realistic than Ruby getting 41% of the Democrat vote, but I still don't think that in a more Republican year that someone like Val Demings would get 20% of the Republican vote. 10%, I think, would be the would be the high realistic expectation. When I think realistic, would be something like five to seven percent. Now, another thing that's interesting in this poll is that you know Ron DeSantis has a has basically a 24% uh, very favorable rating with Democrats, and I understand that there are some older Democrats who may be pretty loose on COVID who are fans of Ron DeSantis. I know a lot of people like that. And I think it's realistic to say that there are some Democrats who like Ron DeSantis. I think he's going to run ahead of Rubio in 2022. What does not make a ton of sense to me is that a quarter of Democrats would say that he is very favorable. That does not make a ton of sense to me. Now, another thing that's interesting is that, like, kind of as you can see here, or I guess in this, uh, I mean, the overall poll, they only sample 681 likely voters. That means that, you know, it's either, I'm not sure how the poll was conducted, uh, I it, it could be online, it, it could be via phone or text, and you know, online polls, like, I've gotten texts where it'll say, where people think that I live in the state of New Hampshire, and they ask me who I'm going to vote for in the Senate race, A, I can't vote, but I, you know, and I, obviously, I ignore those texts, but, you know, I, like, I get the texts, and it'll just say something like, who are you going to vote for, and I could easily just respond saying, I'm going to vote for Maggie Hassan, I'm, I'm, I'm going to vote for Chris Sununu, I'm going to vote for Kanye West, right? So that's something that I think, you know, online polls I do not trust. And we saw in the 2020 election, by the way, we saw some, like, online survey monkey polls that had Biden up 12 points in Iowa. These polls are not reliable. And that's why I'm not a huge fan of this poll. Now, since we're going by polls here, you would say Florida is safe Republican, but I do not think that is accurate. Now, I do think Rubio is going to win. I just don't think by that 21 points is a reasonable expectation. Now... For some reason, they kept po they, they they pulled the Florida Senate race, um, where they had Scott versus Nelson, and, uh, and that was 2018. I don't know why that happened. Now, an interesting poll here is that they did a three-way poll, or I guess a four-way poll, more importantly, three-way poll in Alaska between Al Gross, a Democrat, Kelly Shabaka, or a more right-wing Republican, Lisa Murkowski, the moderate Republican in the Senate. They had Shabaka winning this race by 14 per or by 14 percent over Murkowski. This is, you know, they factored in ranked choice voting. In, you know, this poll was a decent poll. They did a good job of uh, understanding ranked choice voting. And, you know, I trust the poll. I, I think it's a solid poll for where we are at right now. But it's just really interesting that Murkowski would be down 14 per, or would be down 20% to our primary challenger already. Now, another poll we saw, it, it came out in the Washington 16-point lead for Patty Murray. No surprise there. Now, in Pennsylvania, the interesting polls we're seeing from Pennsylvania are that uh, John Fetterman is leading both Sean Parnell and Jeff uh, Bardos. So, he led Parnell by 8% in this poll. He led Bardos by 10%. And what I find really interesting about this is that the voter engaged, they, they pulled voter engagement. So they said, you know, how likely are you to vote in this election? And so when you look at the, at the voters who say they're definitely not going to vote, for example, 1% of Democrats said they were not going to vote, right? And I, I guess I'm trying to fi find the uh, the best way to represent this, but that's overall pretty even. You know, when you see 1% of Democrats saying they're not going to vote, 1% of Republicans saying they're not going to vote, and then, you know, 9% of Democrats saying they're 50-50, and 12% of Republicans saying they're 50-50, you know, we see pretty similar voter engagement. Democrats might be a little more engaged in this poll, but not by much. 
and you know you you can interpret that many ways. But what we're seeing here is that th- this midterm, I don't think, is going to be a huge wave for either party. It's it's more likely that it's a red wave than a blue wave, but it's still not realistic that we see the GOP gaining you know forty House seats and picking up six Senate seats. Like that's not realistic. So. According to these polls, Pennsylvania would be likely Democrat, and you know John Fetterman performed pretty well in these polls to his credit. But I, I just find it really interesting that they had him with such a big lead. Now Arizona, they, Ohio Predictive Insights came out with a lot of polls, and I'm not. And first of all, Ohio Predictive Insights was like one of the only polls that had McSally winning this race. They had her up in multiple polls in 2020. I did not like it. This poll's okay though because they did sample registered voters instead of likely voters, so to some extent they did a good job. But they had Mark Kelly up by double digits every time except for this plus nine poll. So they pulled him against Mark Bernovich, him against, I don't know who McGuire is, Andy Biggs, Kelly Ward, don't know who Lake is. They, call, they pulled him against John McCain, which does make a ton of sense to me because John McCain uh, passed away three years ago in Kimberly. So uh, Bernovich is, is, I think, the most likely of these people to be the GOP nominee for Senate, and he, he was down 10. Now, I haven't looked at the cross steps for this poll. We're going to try to get through this video quicker. But what I will say is that I don't, Again, I don't trust this poll, but the registered voters preferring Kelly over Brnovich by 10, and only getting 36% of the vote in a state that Trump got 49% of the vote in. Not very good. Not not a very good sign for Mark Brnovich. There were some Missouri polls that came out uh, in April that had Eric Gretens running against uh, Jay Nixon, who I think would, that would be the best matchup for Democrats, both according to me and this poll. Jay Nixon is the former governor of Missouri. Eric Gretens is a pretty controversial Republican who had some scandals. He was accused of rape. So he would be a very controversial candidate, and he was still winning by four. So, you know, that basically averages out between those polls to a likely Republican seat. Um, so it's it, it it's really interesting that we are seeing uh, something, you know, that even – again, polls have overestimated Democrats in Missouri. They, done it, they did it in 2020. They had it within reach for Biden. There was actually a poll that I think had Biden only trailing by two, and, they, and they're going to do it again. And the fact that Jay Nixon is still trailing Eric Gretens by four – not a good sign. And I think April things were more favorable to Democrats than they are right now, just j- just to put it out there. Now, another poll that came out was in Wisconsin between Tom Nelson and Ron Johnson. So Tom Nelson, I think, of him, uh, Sarah Godlewski, and Mandela Barnes, probably the least likely to be the nominee, but that's the only poll we have, had those lean Democrat. We saw another poll, South Carolina, they pulled the 2020 Senate race, I don't know why. And then in March, we saw, you know, after um, uh, after uh, Rob Port announced his retirement, you know, there was an opening for uh, the seat, and they started polling it. So we saw that J.D. Vance was leading Tim Ryan by two, leading Tim, or T- Timkin was leading Ryan by three, Mandel was leading him by four, uh, Amy Acton was leading uh, J.D. JD Vance by two, which is interesting, Acton and Timkin were tied, Acton was leading Mandel by one. So overall, that nets out to a pretty competitive tilt Republican seat, which I think is very interesting, considering the fact that Ohio was an eight-point Trump state, that's what the polls are saying, and it kind of says that Amy Acton would be a stronger candidate than Tim Ryan, which I disagree with. Now, uh, in, in March, we saw a poll between Raphael Warnock and Kelly Lef- uh, Leffler, where they had Leffler uh, uh, trailing Warnock by five, which she lost by two in the January runoff, and then they had Warnock beating Doug College by one. Now, interestingly enough, they had Herschel Walker uh, beating uh, Raphael Warnock, which I think he has now uh, kind of lost his status as the front runner of that race. He was maybe a couple months ago, not anymore, since the allegations of him uh, having, I guess, domestic abuses abuse issues have really hurt him but Trafalgar is a Republican poll they got 2020 wrong they had Trump winning Minnesota they had Trump winning New Hampshire they had Trump winning Nevada um, I think they had him up in Arizona by like five percent so not a great poll but Raphael Warnock would still win by about a lead margin according to this uh, data set now we saw another New Hampshire poll that had Sununu up by six um, we talked about New Hampshire earlier then there were some other polls between uh, Lewandowski and Hassan Bulldog and Hassan. Bulldog's actually going to run again, I think. Um, uh, Bulldog's going to run again, um, but uh, he's unlikely to get the nomination if Sununu runs. And then we saw Hassan beating a goat and trailing to Sununu. So again, we I can see, we continue to see this thing of crossover support. Then where there was a Leahy versus Scott poll, which would have Vermont play, but Scott's not going to run. So the, the, the three competitive states we don't have polls on, no, label um, uh, Iowa as safe Republican because it's likely to be safe Republican, or North Carolina and Nevada. So these states, I think, are both lean for their parties. I think Nevada's lean Democrat, North Carolina's lean Republican. I'll talk about them in later videos, but this is what the Senate would look like if the polls were accurate. And uh, again, we're pretty far out. Polls are not always accurate. The 2020, they were not that great. 
but this is essentially what it would look like. So 51 seats for the Democrats, 47 for the GOP, New Hampshire, or Nevada, and North Carolina, which I think would be, uh, that, that would end up being 52, 48 in favor of the Democrats. Some interesting results here. So that's it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you all in the next video.